What's up my mobile detailing people? We here with another vehicle, full detail to be exact. In this video, we're gonna be going through the step-by-step -step Hunter's detailing way. Let's go. So what's the first thing you do, Wayne? Reach out to the customer? Uh, yeah, besides the whole customer stuff, of course, I let them know I'm coming. Um, the door's unlocked. Message them, let them know I'm here. We do a quick little inspection. Make sure we uh, let them know if anything's broken or anything. Then after that, uh, my bro Lewis over here, he's picking up all the trash and picking up their belongings. And then I get the air started, plug it in, get it ready, and I start blowing all the dust and debris that's all over the place to the front of the vehicle, out of all the cracks and crevices, and then Y'all, y'all stay tuned for what's next after that. All right, and it, uh, it's 12.45. How long should this job take you? This one's gonna take about three hours to three hours and 30 minutes, I would say. Hey, Wayne, so what is that right there? It's called the Tornador. Um, it's pretty much, it's like blowing like a tornado on the carpet, on the leather, and it lifts up everything. So I'm blowing everything to the front, blowing all everything out of the cracks and crevices. So when I wipe down, it's uh, way easier to wipe down. So it's just my, the first thing I do when I get out besides picking the trash and everything up. Hey, this back over here, uh, Lewis, some work. Hey, let me know in the comments down below, would you guys charge extra for having to pick up belongings? Do you guys think that this stuff should be picked up before we get here? Comment it down below. Is that the go-to now instead of doing the straight vacuum? Definitely. You know, because I, I know a lot of detailers, they just go to a vacuuming. You uh -huh. think that's way better? Oh yeah, all the detailers that's up on game, they know if you ain't pulling this out, you ain't got this, you ain't official. I'm sorry. Because if you're gonna vacuum, there's certain things you just can't get out of the carpet without first doing this. Uh, you need some type of agitation on the uh, carpet. You'll know, you'll know what I mean. You've been out there and ain't been able to vacuum something up. So make sure you get, the, get yourself this tool right here. And of course, everything you see is in the description down below. Uh, check it out. And another thing, I know we got electricity here, but sometimes we don't have enough power to power up a vacuum. Uh, um, what else? If you have a pressure washer, all that stuff is too much. So every now and then, it's nice to have an extra electrical cord to do an extra thing. So right now, I'm about to preheat my steamer so it's ready when I start wiping down. How much does it cost? This one hit me for 11, 1100. But it's worth it? It's definitely worth it. And it has a continuous feel. You know how more, most steamers, you have to take it off, let the heat come up come out and then refill it. This mm -hmm. one is a continuous fill and you can keep filling it up and it keeps staying hot. You know what I mean? It has a boiler in here. So you don't have to worry about running out. Nice. Which is the dope part. All right, so how we're gonna attack this car is, I'm gonna let Lewis do that side, front all the way to the back. I'm gonna be on this side, front all the way to the back, pulling out the vacuum for him. He's gonna have his own vacuum. I'm gonna have my own vacuum. So we're gonna attack our own sides like that. So I'm setting him up. Still picking up the trash. It was a lot of stuff in there, guys. Now, this method of you having your own vacuum, he he's having his own vacuum, is that something new? Or is that something that you've been doing for a while and how well does it work? It really all depends on the person you're working with. Once you get to know how they work, you'll know if they're able to do that themselves. Now, if I'm doing it and I'm on his side and he's still on the front or something crazy, then I wouldn't do that method. I would just say, hey, you just focus on this and then I'll go to something else. So it really all depends on the person and how they work. You'll, you'll figure out what works and you'll be like, I can't do that. So, yep. Hey, this shout out to Streamline. Top clean leather cleaner. So specifically for leather. So that's what I'm using on the leather. And then for interior, I use a PNS Express or I'll use Ultra Clean um, Interior Cleaner. So those are the three that I'm using right now. How I clean the seats is I like to saturate it with the cleaner. And then I follow up with my scrub ninja like that. Got to have a strong arm for this, man. Ah. And you just love on the seat. Now let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. So Wayne, what about the detailers that say, Wayne, you're doing too much. You could just wipe it down and have the same effect. Have you ever heard that before? That's false. Cause if you ain't got this scrub ninja and you ain't scrubbing like this, you're not about to get all that dirt out. These people uh, that you come and clean their cars, they have years and years of dirt on here and it ain't ever been scrubbed. And if you come in just white, you're not even getting deep within the, the uh, like the leather, you're not really cleaning it. That's what I'm gonna say to that. 
Now, if you got a maintenance car, now you shouldn't be grabbing a scrub ninja doing all this because it's a maintenance. That's when you grab the towel and just wipe. Mm. So you got to be the one to deep clean it first. Then you follow up with the easier clean. But then every, you know, three months or whatever, you want to get a deep clean in there. So, yep, just like a teeth cleaner, right? Every what, six months to a year? I don't know how, you know, whatever your appointments are. You got to go in and get that deep cleaning because the normal brushes ain't going to cut it all your life. So, oh, so this is a new customer. This is a new customer. Yes, sir. Right. How'd you, how'd you find them or how you find you? I bet y'all can guess. Google. Good old Google. <laughs> now, um, I don't, I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, once I always ask the customer after I finish the detail, but the last one we just came from, he found me from Google. Yo, I want to know. What is your favorite thing to do when it comes to detailing? Comment it down below. My favorite thing is interiors. This right here, this is fun to me. I know most people are gonna look like that's watching these videos that don't aren't really into detailing, but they're just entrepreneurs and talking about like, you think that's fun? <laughs> Wiping a car? <laughs> nah, it's really fun. I really enjoy it. It's crazy. My dad's a janitor, and you guys should see how this man gets down when he's cleaning toilets. This man gets in front of the toilet like this with knee pads and he gets all his cleaners and he's like inside the toilet like this. And he'll go over our work. After we finish cleaning, he comes and then he details it. You know what I mean? So it's just crazy to see him do that. And I'm just like, that's disgusting. That's where people sit and do their thing. But I mean, this is all the same thing. People sitting here and some people are disgusting. You know what I mean? Wiping boogers all over the place, farting in the seats. You go and hit the seats and you didn't get hit all in your, you gotta be careful, man. Y'all see my eye? My eye, my eye is still healing. I went and <laughs> cleaned the disaster, check this out. I'm shampooing and it flung in my eyes. This is why you wear goggles. And it flung in my eye, my whole eye got swollen. And look, I still have like a little sty right here that I gotta probably get some surgery done just to get this whatever bacteria, whatever it is up in there out. And that's how serious it is, it, you know, learn from my mistakes. All right, you guys, so the normal routine, the stuff I have when I'm detailing next to me, brush, towel, my express or leather cleaner, my tornador, air compressor, and I'll have the steamer, which I don't have it right now. I like to have all these ready for every situation and circumstance. So I have this, this is my normal routine with the new vehicle, not maintenance. Now you're doing too much if you're doing this with a maintenance now. Unless you're charging the same price for a maintenance as you are for a new customer, then that's a different story, do your thing. <laughs> and also, you gotta have your knee pads. Look at this. You gotta save your back. Most of you guys out here, y'all in your 25s, 30s, you know what I mean? And we gotta save the back, you know? Doing all that bending over like this, oh, you feel it over some time. Comment it down below, I know you do. So stop playing. Get your knee pads and get down. You know, the clients look out the window. They appreciate to see you out here. You know what I mean? Upside down like this on this. Get out here and get it, man. Something I'll do if like something won't come out, I'll make sure I let it sit and I'll oversaturate it. Let it sit and come back to it. So that's a cool little tactic. Here you go, bro. I robbed him. What do you think it is? Uh, some drink. Mmm. Some drink that, or some food. It looked like some food mixed with some drink in here. Sometimes it's hard to get certain stuff out. You gotta let it sit and marinate. All right, Wayne, where are we at with the detail? We're like two hours in already. Um, so he's finishing up the vacuum. I steamed everything over again, so I go over his work. And I go over everything, every little crack and crevice with the steamer. And now I'm gonna start with the uh, con leather conditioning. He's still vacuuming, touching it up, throwing the carpets back into the vehicle. And after the conditioning, we're gonna start on uh, um, the rims and tires. How's the detail going? It's going great. Yeah. Um, I'm enjoying myself as usual. Not worried about time. And just uh, staying focused on uh, making sure I do everything I need to do so the custom customer can be happy. So yeah, that's what I've been working on is to not be uh, pressed for time and not worry. So I have an event I'm supposed to be to. If I make it, I don't make it. If if I do, then amen. So, so let's talk about that. Right. Time management. Right. I noticed that you know you don't rush it. You make sure you do your job right. Right. But 
What do you do when you're running late or when something comes up? I just, I text the client. I don't call him, I just text him and say, we're running behind due to the detail before you. Uh, this happens when we're out detailing. You know, sometimes people add stuff. Sometimes things are worse. And if they don't understand that, then I would rather not even take care of them. That's not the type of client I want because life is unexpected and things don't always go smoothly. So if they can't understand that, then they're gonna have a hard time. And so, have you had customers like that before? Um, I say 98% of the customers, they, they don't care. Mm. It's that, what, 2% that uh, end up having a problem with it. They'll say straight up, don't come. And it is what it is. Yep, and I say, okay. And then I explain to them how detailing is, how it's unexpected. And then they say, all right, I'll just have to find somebody else. I had one person hit me up a couple days later, like, can you still come after fussing? <laughs> and then they apologized and said I had a bad day. So you gotta remember, it's all about customer service, keeping that peace. Cause you never know if that person's gonna end up coming back and apologizing. <laughs> so, for your full detail, brand new customers, what method do you use to clean the car? Two bucket, one bucket, any other method? Um, I just use one bucket. One big bucket, I got a grit guard, and I just scrub the mitt. And that's that, no need for two, three buckets, it's just this. In between each, uh, each um, car, I just rinse it and wring out the towels and, and go at it again. Simple as that. And I make sure I go top to bottom, no, flip my mitt, top to bottom. And whenever I get to the bottom, I don't bring the mitt back up to the top. Simple oh. as that. So, hey, wait, sorry, man. You have some foam right here on your beard. Yeah, oh, that's all part of the business. <laughs> we don't worry about that. We let that chill there because as soon as you wipe it off, another foam comes back. So okay. just wait till you're done. <laughs> Next is clay ball. We did the iron decontamination already. And now, yep, it's a clay bar filler. Oh, dang. And for the new detailers that don't know, why do you include this step on the full detail? So this step right here is, uh, is decontaminating the paint. And also, if you ever felt the uh, exterior of a car and felt that it was rough, this is gonna smooth out the paint to where it's smooth to the touch. And it's, getting, it's prepping and getting it ready for um, any sealants, any ceramic coatings, so that uh, it could be bare. So the iron decontamination and the clay bar, they work hand in hand. All right, Wayne, what's next? Uh, applying a six month ceramic sealant. He's starting the tires and rims, drying it with the air. And uh, he's gonna apply the tire shine, clean up the rims, finish some touches. After that, we'll look in the inside, put the floor mats, air freshener, that's a wrap. All right, Wayne, seems like you're done with everything. Stay in there. What are the finishing touches on this full detail? I'm gonna look at the paint. And making sure everything is, uh, see this see this right here? Get the that. little drips. Yeah. All right, there you guys have it right there. That goes the full detail on the Lexus. That's a wrap. We gotta go and head to the PNS event. Um, drop it down in the comments down below if you guys have any advice or if you guys enjoyed the tips and tricks on how I go about the detail. You guys stay tuned for the next video. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Let's go.